Mr. Maxwell. Yes, sir. Did you know there's 206 bones in the body? Yeah, I told you last video. That's right. Remember also when a joint was a lousy place to be? Back in the day, a lot of time ago. <laughs> well, actually, joints are places where two bones come together. That's where, as you get older, they get really sore. And... Oh, my joints are always killing me. Yeah, I'm starting to get that way myself. <laughs> Welcome to my world. <laughs> well, anyway, Mr. Maxwell, what's important for them to know is that there's immovable joints and there's movable joints. And you should be able to understand the difference between the two, since you have the word movable and immovable. Right. So an example of an immovable <laughs> joint would be like uh, the bones that come together and form our skull. We've got 20-some bones in our skull alone, and many of them do not move. But some bone joints in our body move a lot, especially in our, in our skull, like our jaw, for instance. And, and it's very important to understand why we have immovable joints. I mean, the whole reason why we have immovable joints in our cranium is because of childbirth. And the fact that the baby's head needs to be able to move to the birth canal. That's why you kind of get that egg shape um, babies because the skull will be shaped that way and then over time will the bones will fuse together forming those immovable joints. Now we're going to spend the next couple of minutes talking about movable joints. And as you can see, movable joints allow for a range of motion. And these include ball and socket joints, hinge joints, pivot joints, and gliding joints. These are movable. How does the ball and socket, uh, what does that allow Mr. Uh, Max? Okay, so the ball and socket is just as, as it sounds. The ball, the end of the bone, fits into a socket, which gives you circular range of motion. Not complete in every direction, as far as you can only go, well, it's limited, but it's still a circular motion. Okay? So, so if you were a softball pitcher, you know the wind up and the throw, you're using the ball and socket joint of your shoulder. The hinge joint allows a back and forth motion, just like the hinge joint does on a stapler. Uh, the hinge joint in your arm allows this backward and forward motion. One direction only, that's it. It doesn't go you know, the other way around. <clears throat> pivot joint. So pivot, it just works worse on. One bone rotates around another, so you have rotation. Okay, and your neck, where the vertebrae actually rotate around each other. Okay, that's where pivot, when you think basketball, you pivot around. You're going around that one foot. Okay, so I mean, the words literally are just like um, they sound. I mean, a pivot joint pivots around something. Okay, then you have a gliding joint. What would that be like, sir? A gliding joint, for example, would be all of the bones that are in our wrist. And for us to make this kind of a motion, the bones have to glide over each other to make a nice smooth motion. So a lot of people say that our joints can be compared to simple machines. If you recall in our last unit, <clears throat> we talked about levers, pulleys, wheels, and axles. Mr. Maxwell, what would be an example of a lever? So a lever would be pretty simple like the elbow. Where the elbow is the fulcrum, okay, and you have the two forces acting with it around that fixed point, that fulcrum, okay. A pulley, <clears throat> pulley, you're dealing with the muscles, with the muscles in the movement, okay. Wheel and axle, okay, you, you've got with the pivoting around that central axis, okay, so that's how you get that wheel and axle. So you're dealing with the three different submachines, okay. And what we'd like you to do is locate examples of each of these joints and explain how they allow specific movements. Okay, so think about the different joints in the body. How do they allow very specific movements? Thank you, Mr. Maxwell. Now I know about points. <laughs>